Ever since I introduced my Hammond V3 organ on my channel, people have been requesting that I make a song on it and really demonstrate the Hammond's abilities to its fullest because it's a really cool instrument and it does lots of cool things. However, before I wanted to just make a video on it and upload it to YouTube, I really wanted to make sure that I could duplicate the sound of the Hammond and Leslie as close as I possibly could to the way it sounds in real life because it sounds absolutely amazing in real life and it's kind of difficult to get that sound quality on a recording. So we tried several different things. We did some research online and looked at how other people recorded their Leslie's. We tried our own different ways. And today I wanted to do a video talking about what we did and what we ended up doing to get the recording. So let's start off. While doing some research on how to record Leslie's online, one thing that I discovered that made a lot of sense was that you should place two microphones, one on either side of the Leslie, just a few inches away from these louvers here. And that makes a lot of sense because the inside of the Leslie, right up here on top, is a rotating spinning cone that makes the sound literally spin. And so you'd get kind of like a back and forth effect between the two microphones, and that honestly just made a lot of sense to me. This is our second setup here, and uh, we've got this microphone over here, and then we also have a second one right over here. Our first setup was slightly different, and let's talk about that right now. The reason we used uh, KSM-109s as the, our first attempt for microphones is because we have lots of them and we use them all the time for percussion. We have one KSM-109 for each of my toms, and then over here we have the newer version. This is the KSM-137, and we have two of these. But laying around the house, as well as being used on the drum set, we have a total of about 12 to 14 KSM-109s. And not only do I have them on my drums, but I also have two of them as overhead microphones as well. For our first attempt at recording the Leslie, what we decided to do is do exactly what we had read online, where we take two sets of microphones and put them offset from each other 180 deg degrees apart on opposite sides of the Leslie. Because we have lots of them laying around, we decided to use four KSM-109s in an XY position on either side of the Leslie as well. The XY position is commonly used on acoustic guitars because it sounds very full, and we thought that that would help make the organ sound very, very full as well. However, because the KSM-109 is really designed for percussion and it's not really meant for recording other things, it didn't really work all that well. The, uh, they actually had a rather thin sound, they didn't have a lot of good bass response, and they really accentuated the high uh, harmonic partials of the organ that I have programmed in at the moment, and it just didn't sound uh, as good as what we were hoping it would. So we decided to try a different setup. For our second setup, we decided to go with large diaphragm uh, condenser microphones because they, were, they would be a lot more warm and they would uh, definitely enhance the bass and make the Leslie sound a lot more full. So on this side, we have a Sony C37A. This is a vintage microphone from the 1960s. Very famous people such as Frank Sinatra likes to use these. And uh, we only have one of these, however, because first of all, they're a bit pricey. And second of all, it's a little bit hard to find one that's in really good condition like this one is. Eventually we're going to get a second one, but for right now we only have one of these. So in, a, in an ideal situation, we would have used two C37As, one on either side. But since we only have one, we used a different microphone on the other side. So let's check that out. On this side of the Leslie, we have another large diaphragm condenser microphone. However, this one is actually a current production mic. This is a Neyman TLM-103, and we have it placed next to the Leslie, just like on the other side, and uh, it was running at the same time that the Sony was. In order to combine and record the sounds in real time, we used this mixer. This is a Soundtrax Topaz S18-4, and we actually have two of these that we bought online as a uh, package deal. Soundtrax has made even smaller mixers than this, but they're actually rather famous for making a very large uh, mixing consoles that would go into like professional recording studios, and hopefully we will have one of those someday in the future. We've used this mixer before to record uh, my drum set, and it works really well for that. So what we did to record the Leslie is we simply dedicated four channels to the small diaphragm condenser microphones, and we recorded it. We used completely dry tracks. We didn't do any kind of reverb or any other sorts of effects on there. We simply just used completely dry, neutral uh, tracks, so no effects. So in the end, we discovered that the large diaphragm condenser mics were much better than the small diaphragm condensers, but what we did discover is that to record a Leslie and really get that classic Leslie sound, to really make it pop, you need the room. 
you need that ambient sound of the room, of the sound bouncing everywhere and just being chaotic, because that's kind of what the Leslie does. It flings the sound around in a circle, and to capture the sound that you hear in real life, you need to emulate that with a microphone. So what we ended up doing is actually using only one recorder and placing it against the uh, near the wall, facing the wall, so that it would not only co um, collect sound directly from the Leslie, but also it would uh, collect sound that bounces off the wall and then hits into the microphone. And that is what we used to get the recording, and I think it worked very well. In fact, when we were first setting up the recorders, I actually suggested, hey, why don't we try out a room microphone as well and toss it in the corner and see what happens. And uh, it turned out that that was the right thing to do. So I want to give you a couple uh, sneak peeks at what I'm going to be playing for you in my next Hammond video. If you think uh, it's going to be interesting and you want to stay tuned for that, you might want to think about subscribing because I think you're, you might enjoy the video and the song that I play on the Hammond organ. So here's a couple little sneak peeks. I actually wrote a, uh, a custom solo for this song and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. So here's a little bit of the, uh, the middle of the song. snippet of what's to come. If you think that sounds kind of fun, which I personally do, um, you might want to stay tuned and check out the next video that I have coming out on the Hammond organ because that video is going to be that song in, uh, in its entirety. So make sure to stay tuned for that if you think it sounds cool, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.